<laughs> so anyway, uh, so over the years, of course, as you know, I get up and play with most of these guys and pick and grin with them. He's mentioned in a South Park episode. And he's the CEO and owner of American Furniture Warehouse, and he often has tigers in his TV commercials. Now, those are the things you probably know about Jake Jabs. Tonight, we sit down with Jake and tell you some of the things you probably didn't know. And uh, so uh, uh, one year I decided, oh, let's uh, have somebody come over. So this has grown into a annual deal. It's a deal and we do it every year. American Furniture Warehouse wants to take you back in time. is originally from a small Montana town called Lodgegrass. We're talking small. We had a sign on the edge of town that had slow down and resume speed, both on the same sign. <laughs> we didn't have a town drunk, everybody just took turns. In a family with nine kids, Jake put himself through Montana State using his natural town. There's a big holler tree down the road here from me where we lay down a dollar or two. When you come round the bend and you come back Again, there's a I'm a musician and started, I worked my way through college playing music and teaching guitar. We were family musicians and although we grew up very poor, uh, but we always had instruments. Jake took his love of music and started successfully selling guitars in Bozeman, Montana. He later expanded. First it was uh, uh, furniture, uh, music, appliances, TVs, and then furniture. And it turned into one of the most dominant home furnishing stores in the country, raking in nearly $400 million annually. But it's not about the money. Entrepreneurs don't do it for the money. They do it because we're contributing back, they're creating new products, they're bringing new ideas to the marketplace, and they're giving back. And that's what entrepreneurs do. What you don't see in those commercials, Jake's big heart. Over the years, he's given millions away to several causes. The charities that I like to give to are the ones that help this. I don't give to the art galleries. I don't give to the museums. I don't give to the, to the symphony orchestras. I don't, I don't do that. I give to, I think, people that genuinely need help. Uh, particularly people with disabilities. Even with his unmatched success, Jake claims back in the day, if he'd been better at just one thing, there may not be an American Furniture Warehouse. I played music for a while out of Nashville. I toured with Marty Robbins, the lead guitar player. I don't know if you, you remember Marty Robbins. Oh, yeah, yeah. Out in the West Texas town of El Paso. I could from the West Texas town of El Paso out to the badlands of New Mexico. Back in El Paso, my life would be worthless. Everything's gone in life, nothing is left. If I could sing like Marty, I'd still be playing. <laughs> I'd still be playing music, but I couldn't sing like him. Boy, what a kick! Hanging out with Jake was really a good time. By the way, as far as retirement, I asked Jake about retirement, and he said, "Not a chance." Yeah, he he's quite the character. He was a character. He also said, "When you retire, you die." So he didn't want to do that either. Yeah. So maybe he never. Very will. honest <laughs> man. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, people just love it. The musicians love it, uh, we love it. <laughs> I love it. It's a good time to get together and do some of the great old time favorite country songs like Will the Circle Be Un... Jabs has written books on business, including American Tiger and Thriving in Tough Times. Here's some advice for keeping business going through tough times. So we pay cash for everything. So we have no debt, have no, no debt on buildings, no debt on trucks, no debt on furniture. Everything is paid for. I can survive this recession 
but no debt. But the lesson learned are you put the money back in the business. You don't try to make yourself get rich or the company get rich. You, you put the money back in the business. I wanted the business to be successful. You know, I wanted my business to be successful, not me personally. I wanted the business to be successful. One followed close behind her, tried to be a pain but I could not hide my sorrow, and they laid in the impetus this party do you know roughly how many years have you been having a music party this is my 13th year <laughs> and what made you want to have this party with your friends and just to enjoy music what was your kind of thought on that well first place the setting is great I don't know if you got a picture of all the trees. I planted all these trees myself by the way in my backyard you might say I remember when uh, this house was being built uh, my wife uh, negotiated, she negotiated. Normally when you buy a new house, you negotiate. She says, I don't want to negotiate, I want a great backyard. So she got a great backyard. We got a water fountain. Uh, we got a great place for recreation. How sweet the sound. So it's an opportunity for us to get together and, and visit, talk about some things we've done before, remembrances, and also to sing and have some great music. Just like the sun over the Hi there, are you doing name tags? I am. How are you, my friend? I never gone so wrong as to tell you.
like a lighthouse You must stand alone And God the same is journey No matter what seas are People love to come and join you. I feel so honored to be here. Does that make you proud? Do you get an experience pride uh, in these yeah, moments? This is kind of like the highlight, you might say, yeah. yeah. So we do it at the right time of year. It's in the fall where I have these great evenings here in Colorado. So it's kind of the highlight of, uh, of my music career.